you know, the end product of it in the middle of it. So the difference is one person is like being very assumptive in that close and they're keeping high energy and they're smiling, they're reaffirming all the hot buttons and then they're literally just doing it. They're, she's booking you. What, what, what day works best for that? And when we talk about moving, transitioning into finance, I'm like, this is the dance. Everything in this moment, it all has to do with your energy, what you say to them to get them over. They want it. They just told you they like the numbers, but energetically they're in this place where like, that all sounds good, but I'm not sure of what to do. And so in that place, they're just looking for anything else in the room to guide them because they're unsure. And when you're confident and you just are assumptive and you move forward, you just be very, very surprised how many people just take that guidance, especially when the relationship's there. So um, it's definitely more art than science, but it is something that we can all easily adapt to regardless of personality type, um, all of that stuff. Like it's something that we all can pick up on. So. Well, very, don't very look at the close as the close. Mm -hmm. I don't, I never ask if they like the numbers. Like I never ask that ever. I just assume that the numbers make sense. So like, even when I'm going over like why Revis, I'm like, we're like a real estate agent. If you don't like numbers, if you don't like APR, if you don't like any of this, you just tell me and I'll figure it out. And I notice that I say that and I harp on it and no one ever tries to backfire me. Mm -hmm. I used to get all the time, but I, they don't anymore because I'm very confident on it. I was never, you have to understand too, and this is when I realized that you're passionate about what you do, not even just solar, you don't have to be passionate about solar, but just be passionate that we are literally helping people. Like as long as you understand that you're passionate about it and you understand that you're helping them and the numbers always make sense, it'll resonate with you. And yeah. I learned this because I used to, um, I used to accept when they give me an objection, an, an objection at the door, and now I don't look at look at it as an objection. I look at it as I need to hold their hand even longer. Mm -hmm. um, and then whenever um, APR, I used to think the APR was so high, and I I felt it. I was so confident that it was so high that everyone would always try to get a lower APR all the time because I felt it and I gave that energy off that the APR was not good enough. But now I say it completely different, and now I never get anyone saying the APR is too high. Mm -hmm. So it's really just like what you believe in is what they're going to believe in. So as long as you believe in what you're selling and you truly believe in the numbers, then it's going to give off that energy. It's really just mindset and energy because you can you can control those things and those control everything that happens. You can have a horrible mindset and be saying all the right things and it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Like you really have to believe in what you're saying because it's it's all genuine and they feel it. Energy is real. So just yeah, really you gotta you gotta find happens. some far some some part of our process to be obsessed with. I yeah. never claim to be an environmentalist and I own a solar company. But what I am passionate about is helping people save money. And I think about that a lot when I'm walking into the home and when I'm giving the presentation, obviously the presentation is designed majority on saving money, not necessarily the environment. Um, but that's what I'm thinking about. And when I'm trying to make a friend, when I'm trying to do discovery, that's what I'm thinking about. How can I help someone in this area? Because this is something that in my heart that I care about. So like I don't radiate any type of ill intention, like vibes in the home or unconfident vibes. Because I 100%, not 99, not 98, 100% believe every single thing that I'm saying, and I fully believe in these savings and the product. Mm -hmm. So when you have that type of confidence going in, like it's easy to radiate that. But if you're like, if you're, even if you don't own a home and you're like, well, I'm unsure if I get this or I'm unsure about this or that, you need to go, me and Lindsay were talking about this the other week, you need to go find solar success stories before you take appointments. Yeah. You need to watch videos, you need to read comments, you need to do things, even if you've been here for a while, you need to do this a lot. You need to get in touch with people that you've had a great appointment with, even if they didn't die, even if they didn't buy, if they've been installed, like just talk to them. When we were knocking and doing door training a couple weeks ago, this guy had a ground mount system in his backyard. We stopped talking to him for like 10 minutes and we walked away. I was like, I'm on fire after hearing everything that he just said. He's like, man, this, this thing paid for itself twice over. Like it was a no brainer. It's the easiest thing in the world. Yada, yada, yada. I just love hearing that. So like, it's you all, yeah, yeah, especially when exactly, you've like dealt exactly. with people who are just, this. So yeah. rude all the time, and they're like, ah, whatever. Anyway. There's some people who are like, well, they they'll show you a list of well, solar doesn't work because this, and yeah. the minerals and this, and then like that stuff will start to seep into your feet over time. And there's people, this is a scam, and this doesn't pay for itself. And who cool, man, it's not for you, right? Everybody's not a buyer, so like, cut those people off fast because that language will get into the back of your mind. And over time, when you don't close and don't close and don't close, all of a sudden you're doubting yourself. You're down the product, you're down the company, and ultimately it's just because you let all this bad information yes. outweigh all the good information that you could take in. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got to stop, otherwise we'll never get out of here. <clears throat> so let's transition. Today is, um, we're going to do training on the doors. Majority of it is going to be role playing today. Um, this particular uh, presentation, we've all seen it before. 
So I'm going to uh, give a highlighted overview of the first few slides before I walk into the, the majority of it. Does everybody remember this? Yeah. Okay. So keep your sales pipeline full by prospecting continuously. Always have more people to see than you have time to see them. Um, Brian Tracy is a, a, a sales expert, motivational speaker, but that statement rings super true. You guys, there's a lot of reschedules, cancellation. In the middle of the month, we had, I don't know, it was almost like a record. I mean, there was two weeks in a row where I felt like every time I looked up, it was like a reschedule or a no-show appointment. Um, so that's why stealth training is, is important. Because even if the appointment setters and our leads and everything are working fine, stuff happens and you always want to keep that pipeline full. You don't want to drive 30, 40 minutes thinking you have an appointment and then they don't show up and then you have like, you don't know what else is going that day, right? And if it's an evening appointment, you blocked out two hours prior, you didn't do anything and then they didn't show up and now, now like essentially half of the day is wasted. So always, always want to have far more people to see than you have time to see them. Um, I'll quickly talk about Google Project Sunroof. So Google Project Sunroof, who can explain to the rest of the people in the room what that is and why it's helpful for um, for in It shows uh, the amount of sunlight rooms get in neighborhoods. Yep, yep. What else? Already looked up whether the entire area is good or not, but let's say you just have an appointment or a referral. You want to check out that area ahead of time just to see how good is this whole area. I don't want to go to this house and get one sale. I want to go to the house and I want to get their neighbors. I want to get their, their brother, their sister. You want to turn every single appointment into at least three sales so that you're not always trying to figure out what's next. And if you can squeeze three sales out of every person that you sit down with, whether it's a credit fail or not, this job gets a lot easier and it should get easier over time. And you should start to have far more people coming to you than you have to be a hunter all the time. After you're here for about six months or so, you shouldn't be hunting as much. You should, you should have so many referrals from every single person that you sit with or me that you don't have time for anything else but taking those referrals and taking appointments. Um, but this is a really great tool for finding areas that, that just make sense. Um, <clears throat> all right, setting the appointment process. Um, Darius, you want to read this for us? Yeah. Well, you're pretty far away. Brad, you want to take this for us? Does everybody understand that? So most of the times, a home you can tell if you if you're just really paying attention. A renter, they're not more than likely most of the time, not all the time, going to keep up with the landscape. But if they've got a lot of patio furniture that you can see in the backyard, swing sets, everything's really cared for, bushes trimmed. Okay, here's the homeowner that's taking care of the home and probably doing DIY projects. This is probably a good fit. But if everything's kind of like falling off of the house and all that <laughs> stuff, it's probably not a good fit. Yeah. Step two, knock. Mentally understand you are not here to sell yet. You're here to qualify and set an appointment. Give value by informing them of our offering and a potential solution to their high energy bills problem. Uh, step three, engage. Create a pattern, interrupt. Not here to sell you anything. They expect you to immediately pitch a product. You're there to just give the information. All right, hang on one second. We're gonna talk more about pattern interrupt on the, on the next one. But um, who can tell us and tell everybody what a pattern interrupt is in sales? Um, it's just when they're expecting something that every other person does, it's very uniform or common. Um, like when normal people get their door knocked on, they answer it, the salesperson just starts rambling off mm -hmm. all the values and benefits of what they're doing. Um, with pattern interrupt, um, you're breaking that off. Like you just say a short statement, cut it down, and all of a sudden, they're no longer have a robotic answer because you're not giving them a robotic yes. pitch. Yep. And also, when they answer the door, there's other things that you should do to break that preoccupation, which is what we're going to talk about in the same realm of a pattern interrupt. But go ahead. That's tip four, qualify. Verify they do own the home. Verify the average and highest bill they've had in the last 12 months. Uh, step five, solidify. After setting the appointment, make sure they are serious. Don't set a quick appointment and walk away fast, but they have 100% no-show. Oftentimes, somebody will set up an appointment with us because they're too nice to say no. But that isn't the case here, is it? So that's my go-to line um, for me to solidify an appointment and also have that pattern interrupt to call out exactly what's going on in their mind. So for me, it works. Um, if that's We've talked about this before, and people have changed it up a little bit or not said it. Fine, but you really need to find something that calls them out in their brain because 
if I'm sitting on the couch watching watching the game or whatever, and somebody knocks on my door, it doesn't matter if they're offering me a chance to win a new car. I'm just going to figure out, all right, let me listen to what they say so I can quickly get back to what I was doing. Right. And so understand that everybody's thinking that even if they're nice and letting you talk, part of them just wants you to leave so they can go right back to whatever they were doing. So even if they are like, ah, I like this information, I'll listen to it. You really have to solidify it one or two more times before you walk away, because the worst thing in the world is thinking you have like three self gen appointments that day and they all know show and your whole day is like a bust or two that day. So I can't stress that enough because we had people who were extremely good setting 40, 50 appointments per month and only 15 of them sitting. That's a lot of sweating and walking around in the summer to only sit down with 15 people and only close at 30%. That's a, that's a lot. Or you can be eight for eight, <laughs> you know, and that's much higher, much higher percentage. That's working smarter, not harder. Um, but all right. So let's talk about this from, uh, really, a a framework perspective, an overarching view of what we want to do at the doors. So step number one, write this down, is break the preoccupation. And so for me, I do this in different ways. Like I love, a good thing, an easy thing for me to do is the dogs. When you open the door and there's a dog there, I'm not even going to go into the pitch. I'm going to do something silly that's going to stand out from anybody else who's going to get to the door and immediately start being a robot and spewing all this information. I'm going to talk about their shirt. I'm going to talk about the dogs. I'm going to make a joke about the weather, whether it's hot, cold, rainy, or whatever. I'm going to do something that's like, it's like what? Like either makes them laugh, or like what's going on? You know what I mean? So you have to think about something silly. And one of the things I gave, I read before, I was like, dude, if you got to walk up to every door with like music playing in your back pocket, do it. No one else is doing that. And it's going to like make people think, what is this guy doing? Like, what is this about? Like, is he really playing that right now? Like, what is this? But they have, they have to have some sort of different reaction because in their brain, everybody that knocks on their door is a salesman and they're probably selling something that they don't want or need. Right. So if you can immediately say I'm different and it makes their brain come down a little bit and it piques their curiosity. So be thinking about what you can do. And I was telling Thomas when we were training on the doors a couple of weeks ago, I was like, I know it's your first time out here and I know you're really nervous, but I don't know what it is about you, but everybody listens to you. Right. He just has this very innocent vibe. And I was like, they're letting you pitch. Like one thing about him is that like he has this, this, I call it dad humor that is very genuine. I'm like, use that dude. If you're nervous at the door, they're nervous too. They're like, what does this dude want? You know what I'm saying? So like lighten up, say a joke, break the preoccupation and then you get into the pitch. So step number two, after you've done something to break the preoccupation, whether it's told a joke, whether it's complimented their, you know, whatever, their lawn, you want to ask questions right away. So you're taking control right away. Who else do you know in this neighborhood, right? How, have you guys lived here for a long time? Like there's, you want to immediately start asking questions to, again, start the conversation and be in control. Um, number three, again, is another pattern interrupt. So right when you're asking questions, which all of this will go into our script, uh, you want to break the pattern. So man, I'm not here to sell you anything at all. Just here to give the information because the rebates are now for this area, right? I've completely, I've hopefully broken them down for them to think that I'm there to collect a check, get a debit card or anything like that. What are some other ways that we can break that pattern? A break, let's talk about both the pattern interrupt and pre and breaking the preoccup, preoccupation. What are some ways that we can do either of those outside of the ones that I just talked about? Um, whenever I go to the door, I'm always like, hey, how's it going? Like, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's just weird for them because they're like, I don't know. But it definitely, people kind of like, what? And if they don't answer me, I'm like, how are you doing? So I think that's something I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's simple, yeah. but it makes them be like, yeah. and it just shows that I like, care about them. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, yeah. how's it going? Or yeah. how's your day? You look happy? Or yes. So but listen to how she described their reaction. Like, that's what you want. Because once it throws them off, they're not thinking about how quickly can I get back inside. Mm -hmm. Their brain is focused on a whole different part, which is, why is she here? You know what I mean? <laughs> what does this dude want? Like, that's where you want them to be, not thinking like, all right, how quickly can I get them to walk away? They got to be thinking like, what is this about? Because once they think that and say that, then they'll be receptive and open to listening to the pitch. Um, so then the what and the why. You want to quickly get to what are you doing here and why are you here? Like, right, what's the product and why are, why are you pitching it? So for us, obviously, is we're there to collect information, to give information about the rebates being in the area, right? Um, and then the why, one thing I want you guys to start saying is what's in it for you? Because if you are so much about what we do and how we position it to the customer, it's throwing them off because it feels like, 
All of this is free and there's tremendous value and there's no cost to you and it's equity and rebates and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just this guy who's, I just like walking around just giving information out. It sounds too good to be true. So if you start telling people why you're doing it and what's in it for you, then they'll understand that and they'll be able to relate to it. Look, man, the reason that they have us out here knocking doors is because the rebates are for your area. But the reason they got me knocking doors out here in 50 degrees is because it's going to be easy for me to get referrals, right? We have a lot of focus in this neighborhood. I want to get as many referrals and know as many homeowners here as I can because it's going to make my job easier, right? So tell them that. I'm knocking doors so that I can get referrals so that I can knock less doors. I also <laughs> want to know everybody in this neighborhood. So once you told them like what you're doing and why you're doing it and what's in it for both them and you, then it's like, okay, I understand this person. But if I'm like, yeah, all this is free. It's not going to cost you anything. And I'm just doing it out the kindness of my heart. <laughs> then it's kind of like, all right, dude, like clearly there's a catch somewhere um, and it's going to throw people off. So always tell them like what's in it for you as well. That's a very, very important piece. Um, oh, I put that on there twice or three or yeah, twice. So step six, the pullback. What does that mean? We talk about it a lot in our regular pitch. Darius, what, tell us about the pullback. Um, we're tracking the offer a little bit, um, making it more enticed for it. Um, for example, like we don't even know if your home's a good fit or um, any verbiage of around like them qualifying because everyone's like, well, I can get this. Like, let me see if I can because they yeah. feel like they want to yeah. be part of something. Yeah. Have you guys ever like saw something online that you really wanted to buy and you're like, no, let me wait a day, and, and then you go back and it's gone and you're like so pissed off and you like really wanted it. It's kind of like that. Like, mm -hmm. whenever I know that I can't have something, it almost makes me want it a little bit. More. Yeah. So it does definitely entice people to be like, well, wait a minute. Why can't? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Why yeah. can't I go smaller? Yeah. So you got to position the offer, and obviously our offer is going to be of uh, great value. Then, you, oh man, you probably aren't even a good fit. If you're not, no worries. Hopefully, at least this information is going to be a good fit. Maybe you can pass me along to one of the neighbors if this home isn't a good fit. Actually, I'm looking at the roof, and it probably has too many angles, so it might not be a good fit at all. <laughs> like you want to start to kind of pull it back so their curiosity grows even more. And then step seven is the transition, which is basically just the close. Most people, um, there's a lot, but most people aren't going to be like, all right, yeah, let's let's do it. You have to ask them what day works best. If I come back out tomorrow or the day after, which one will make more sense for you guys? Right. Same with the sales. Same with the credit app, the credit form, booking the site survey. Don't wait for them to say, let's do it. There's going to be a people that actually say, all right, yeah, can you come out tomorrow at this time before you get there? And they're the best people in the world. But majority of your money is going to come from you grabbing the steering wheel and saying, hey, I'm coming to be at, I'm going to be out here tomorrow. Would it be best if I came back by six or also be out here the day after around noon? Which one of those dates and times will work better for both you and your spouse? Um, so always be assumptive with that transition. Uh, what questions do you guys have about that? Cool. Do people react to how you react? Uh -huh. So if you come in, I mean, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but um, like if you come in wearing your mask, they feel like you, they need to, and you're mm -hmm. setting that tone. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm not telling you not to, but I'm just saying it. They, you're setting the tone. And so, but I feel like, and this could just be my belief, but I feel like not wearing one already begins the trust. Mm -hmm. So do you, step, especially for males, we'll talk about back it. Because then they can look out their window and they can mm -hmm. see your full body. They see like yeah. you're not you're not carrying anything. If you're right up on the door, they can't really see what you have in your hands. Like yeah. it can be a little scary. Mm -hmm. So if you're fully back, they can see like, oh, this guy's just standing there. He doesn't have anything. He doesn't look scary. So yeah. Yeah. We live in a time where people are like terrified to answer unknown numbers. So yeah. Yeah. I don't answer my door most of the time. So. <laughs> Nice. No. Um, <clears throat> perfect. Can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Samantha, can you see this? Can you read this? Uh huh. On average, forty percent of appointments will actually sit down. So that's four out of every ten. So when you set the right expectations for the next appointment, they're going to be excited. Um, so there, these three things are key when setting an appointment. So number one is value. So right over the gate, you need to be providing value to them um, to let them know that you're genuinely there to help them and not sell them. So something that no matter, something that no other rep is doing that gives them value, even if they don't go solar. All right, boss. So what's one example of how we can do that? Someone else outside of Samantha. Offer information. Mm -hmm. But what 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 type of information? Oh, that they could save money. 
Tree. Yep. So yes, what specific information about like our pro like what's our our three like I guess pillars of value with solar? Oh, no money down mm -hmm. installation. Yeah. And uh, kicks. Uh, yeah, discount. Yeah. At the door, I typically don't like to talk about no money down unless they ask because no money down sounds very salesy and then it goes right into it. So I'm really focused on slashing that energy bill in half and owning the power and not renting from the City of Independence or Evergy. And I'm getting them kind of riled up about that because if I'm prospecting in an area that's seen their usage go up or their cost per power go up, they're going to understand that language right away. Um, but you guys are spot on. So you want to go to the next one? Oh, yeah. Uh, number two is trust. So building value leads to trust. If they trust you, then they won't smoke screen you or ghost you. So uh, one of the things we talked about before was telling them what's in it for you. Tell them why you're out there, what's in it for them, and then what's in it for you. And that's how you can build trust with them in a very short amount of time. But if you, again, if we build up this value and it's like, yeah, all this is free for you, and I'm just out here just trying to just give them the information, does that sound very trusting? Are you... Do you are you do you think that you would personally trust someone who's offering you all this money, equity, rebate checks, and then it's like, yeah, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just here to give that information. So, being upfront with them, like, yeah, this makes my job easier. That's why I'm out on the doors in 90 degrees or 50 degrees or 40 degrees, so that I can get referrals, so I can take care of this neighborhood, but also get referrals, so that it's easier for me to do my job um, as a solar consultant. That's why I'm out here today. And then number three. Um, number three is urgency. If they don't feel like this is important, they'll cancel and brush it off. But if they feel it's time sensitive, like the federal tax credit, the summer coming incentives, then they'll book a sooner date and make sure to be there. Yeah, so this right now is super huge, especially for you guys coming out of the gate around this time. But for everybody else, the FTC is, the year's coming to an end. So it's a very, very big push for urgency for people to not want to think about it, to not want to waste time dragging their feet. You get to, hey, man, if this is something you're even remotely interested in, the federal tax credit is expiring. So I strongly suggest getting the information now. That way we don't have to wonder because it could be the difference of a lot of money for you if it does make sense to go now. Um, so if any of these three things are missing in the appointment, if, it, if any of these three things are missing, the appointment is in limbo, especially trust. If people don't trust you, they won't buy. Um, so little things, use their name in the conversation. If you are one of those people who are saying things to yourself like, I'm really bad at names, or I always forget names, like, you figure out a way around that. You have to be very, very good with names, visual cues, even if you have to do, like, little things like, if they tell you your name, just think of one other person that you know that has that name from high school, family, friends, et cetera, <laughs> and then just picture that face in your mind as you're talking to them. Um, it's a very common thing that people use to remember names. Compliment them. People love talking about their self, their kids, their cars, etc., sports. So even when you're standing there, the people have that little thing that's like little Timmy Rand, you know, track at We Summit High, or there's a minivan with debate stickers on the back. Like all these cues that you can try to build like some sort of rapport in a very micro way. Um, that way everything is not all about business because like she said earlier, if they like you and they trust you, they're going to show up to that appointment and then they're going to be more likely to buy because they're buying from a friend. Uh, confirm the dating time is good for both spouses more than once. Uh, have a flyer or a card that you can put on the fridge. You can text them. If it's a self ten. this is where we want to do the bios. We don't want to send the bios to company set appointments anymore. I don't know why, but they're reading them and they're getting cold feet. But that night after you guys have put everything in the job form or right when you walk away, that's when you need to send the photos with the biopics. Has everybody created that or done that? If not, we're, we'll do it. We'll make sure that you guys have it set up. Um, where was that? Uh, and then texting them after leaving the appointment, letting them know a, a brief description of what you talked about, which is going to be everything in that bio. Um, and then use this line. Not here for a decision. We just want to get you and your family all the facts and figures so you can make an informative decision. If it looks great, if it looks good, great. If not... At least you'll know what you're saying no to, and I've done my job. So very good line to kind of make it, kind of pull back a little bit in that, right? Like, hey, if this looks good for you, perfect. If not, then no worries. At least you finally know that solar doesn't make sense for you guys. And then I've also done my part on taking care of this neighborhood. So um, getting appointments to stick, in my opinion, is, is the more complicated piece to actually setting them because setting them does no good if they don't show up. It actually hurts you far worse than not having them. I'd rather have no self-gens and have a bunch of self-gens that don't sit down with me because then I've done a lot of work that doesn't make sense and I'm getting no return on that investment. 
what questions do you guys have about this or anything that we've covered so far? All right, perfect. So visual cues of a good neighborhood. Uh, location, an ideal neighborhood is not the most expensive home in town, definitely not the least. You wanna be somewhere in the middle. Uh, Lindsay, why do we wanna be somewhere in the middle? With the people that we talk the most. And why? Uh, because they have the credit to qualify, but um, they are, uh, um, they, have a, they have a need to save money too. Right, so they've got the credit and they've got the, the money and the lifestyle to buy, but their income generally is not high enough to where there's not a need. So we're talking about middle America, uh, city workers, teachers, nurses, um, that type, right? Um, again, good credit, families might have a family. The need for them to save money is definitely there, but they're not struggling enough to where they can't afford it or don't have the credit. And then anything with kids is always gonna be a great cue, right? They've got basketball holes, there's scooters and bikes laying out in the yards. You know they've got kids, you know those parents need to save money. So kids is always a great cue. Anything that you can see, basketball hoops, bikes, multiple cars, garages, all indicators of higher usage because of more people in the home. Um, and then property size. So big, again, if it's me and I'm working just smarter, I don't really want to sell three and four and five. I don't even really want to sell six kilowatt systems. So I'm trying to figure out just again, from a, from a, where I'm starting, like what makes more sense for what I want to accomplish. But when you first start now, or probably everybody in this room, you really just want to attack everything. And then later you can start to kind of get to that place where you can maybe be a little bit more selective. But even when you're setting those smaller homes, uh, if it's me, I pass it along. We talked about this, put the deal, pass it to a teammate, take half of it, um, and it multiply yourself that way. Any questions on finding a good neighborhood or finding good homes? Does it make pretty sense? This is all super, super simple. The thing that gets in people's minds and gets in the way is just actually doing it. Um, and that's that's why th there's not a whole lot to train on on the doors. It's literally just doing it. There's so many different ways that you can start the conversation at the door, which is what we're about to do in the role play. But the biggest thing is just having, just getting up off the couch or wherever you're sitting and just going to go do it. Like, that's it. That's the hardest thing that steps in all of our ways is just actually doing it. Um, but let's go into the, let's go into role plays. So we're going to do live role plays and we'll have people come up and stand right here and do it as if we're actually at the doors. Do we have any volunteers to go first? Samantha, come on up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in the way that it's going to work out, I've been trying to record a door training for so long. The way it's going to work out, you just knock on the door, and then I'll be the homeowner and I'll answer. Okay. And then uh, everybody's going to go, so everybody else, don't get too comfortable. Uh, no pressure. Um, and then we'll go into it. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. I'm a very, like... I don't know. Okay. You don't have to read this. This is just uh, okay. for anybody who kind of wants to be able to glance at it. Okay. So just do what you do. Okay. This, and this is a good point. So again, framework. My job is to give you guys systems and tools that I know work. But I don't want you to fit into a mold or to be me or to be her or to be Thomas or Darius. You have to figure out what's super authentic for you, your language, the verbiage, and then like use that. Because at, at any point, if you have to say this script or our regular script and you're saying things that you don't 100% believe in, then you can't possibly like convey that confidence. Right. So you have to like make this your own. But this framework is designed to keep the customer in the conversation and to get them to setting the appointment. Um, and that's all it is. <clears throat> <laughs> but no, that's a that's a great. Why is that a great way to knock? Wouldn't you knock that way? Why is it? Huh? Exactly. I don't know if it was a black thing, but like everybody in my family does that every time. So when we hear that knock at whoever's house we're at, we're like, we run to the door. So great way to break the preoccupation. Yes, any type of cadence. It just it's like you know, you go to your mom's house, you're like. Oh, you're like, no, no, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if somebody's at the door and they're like, 
You're like, oh no. As a matter of fact, I'm going downstairs. I'm going to murder at the door. All right. Hello? Hey, how's it going? Uh, it's going okay. I'm What's up? good. My name is Samantha. Um, I'm with Rebus Energy. We're a participating okay. contractor in the solar rebate program. Oh, okay. What's that? Uh, so, uh, no one says that. <laughs> this is hard because everybody in the room knows how it's supposed to go so we're all going to mess up but it's when you do it here you mess up in front of people who know what you're supposed to say it's so much easier out there so but go ahead wait i'm restarting because okay, i don't be in control so i don't do that a lot <laughs> hello hey how's it going it's going okay how, what's, what's up good my name is samantha i'm with Regus energy we're a participating contractor in the solar rebate program okay. so i'm not going to sell you about anything actually just get credit for taking care of your neighborhood and letting you guys know what's going on you said solar uh-huh are you familiar yeah i think there was a guy around the corner that has it so yeah yeah there's quite okay. a few people in your neighborhood you guys neighborhood is actually perfect um because you don't have a lot of trees it's actually good for you okay um so can't promise anything it doesn't always work out for everyone but that's why we're out here so I actually get credit for taking care of you guys and letting you guys know what's going on. Okay. So I can get credit. Is that okay if I ask you a few questions? Uh, I'm, I'm pressed for time, but yeah, go ahead, shoot. Okay, perfect. So the first question is, um, speaking with homeowner or speaking with homeowners. First pause you, <laughs> for a second. What did you guys notice about her whole cadence and everything? What what works for her? Talking to that is she's easy. supposed to give you a chance to say no, it's just going. Because mm -hmm. you're not going to just shut the door on her while she's sitting there talking. Mm -hmm. You're not going to just be like, no. <laughs> but why else am I not going to do that outside of her speed and cadence, which is really good? Her energy. Her energy. Her energy. If she's standing there and she's talking long, she's like, yeah, I'm just out here trying to. <laughs> Is it I almost get like extra energy to like nah man get out of here. <laughs> but when she's like on it, she's fast, she has control, she's looking me dead in the face and being direct. It's very hard for me to do anything else. I don't even have a moment to get into word in, until she gets me to that next question. So it works. Um, go ahead. Um, okay, so how much do you think you pay per average on your power bill? Man, I don't, it just keeps going up. I would say a good average for us is probably about maybe 180. Okay, that's a lot. No worries. Um, and so speaking with homeowners, we see that they have one or two problems. Okay. Um, one problem is they're always seeing their rates go up throughout the years. Okay. Or the second problem is they made some energy efficient changes to their home, but they're still kind of just seeing the rates stay the same. Mm -hmm. Which one would you say you are? Oh, I've definitely noticed it go up. We've only been there for like four years, and every summer uh, it just – more and more is when I notice it, especially in the summer. So yeah. Yeah, I definitely understand. So that's why people do go solar, um, because you already set rates, you don't have to worry about the rising rates. And when you do make energy efficient changes to your home, you're only going to see even more savings. Um, so we're actually focused in on this area in particular. So we are doing zero down, zero installation, and six months of free power. Okay. Um, so just to kind of recap, there's three major reasons why people in your neighborhood are making that switch to solar. Um, number one is because you're out of set rates, so you never have to worry about those the rates going up and up throughout the years. Um, the second thing, again, you're out of set rates, so you never have to worry about the high summer bills. Uh -huh. And the third thing is you're owning your power and putting a lot of equity back into your home. So I'm actually going to be out in this area the rest of this week and next week as well. If I were to come back, which day works best for you? Um, well, let me ask you a question. So, like, what's like a general kind of ideal cost is what I'm thinking of because. I noticed that guy's system and I'm uh -huh. interested, but like, I don't really know anything about how, like the price is. Yeah, I definitely understand. So that's why we did the consultation. Uh, we want to make sure it makes sense for you because it doesn't make sense for everybody. So kind of how it works is we're going to take the past 12 months of your usage. We're going to create a system for you. That's going to tell us how much it is. We're going to compare what it looks like staying with Evergy, what it looks like going solar and see if it makes sense for you. Um, so like I said, I'll be back in the area, which day works best for you. Awesome. Give it up for some Monday. <laughs> Working out in a lot of different ways. Um, do you have a couple moments I can just ask you a few quick questions? Um, let's pause. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, before I ask them, what would you have rather said than, than that? Um, because you asked me a yes or no question, yeah. and what am I going to lean towards? No. Yeah, so, so what would have been a better question? Just ask the questions. Just... What's, what's the number one question that we want to ask? What's how really much are you paying for? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Sorry, let's go right back there. All right, so how much are you paying for money for power? Uh, man, on average, probably about like 180, 190, I'd say. Yeah. So talking to your neighbors, I can say that's just a little bit high compared to them. Um, kids home, it doesn't change at all. Yeah. Um, so one of the three reasons, just all to right, pause real quick. Yeah. So what did he do really well right there? One, he transitioned, but two, like he, when I told him how much I was paying, wow, that's yeah. one of the reasons everybody in this area, and there's like this social element, right? You take my bill, 
which I gave him a tiny thing like, yeah, it's the highest that I've seen. He's like, that's really hot. It's one of the biggest reasons a lot of people here have been going solar or talking about solar is because that bill is never going to change. That's why this is a framework. So literally, no matter what they say, it goes right back into what we need to say and guides them to the end. So again, no matter what they say, she did the same thing when I was like 180. She was like, that's a lot. No matter what they say, that is a lot. If they have really small, if it's a smaller building, it's like 130, that's a lot for this size home. Man. When I see homes usually about this range and they go solar, and so it works. Yeah, but their neighbor always pays less, right? Yeah, always. Um, <laughs> uh, and they always have the highest one in the neighborhood. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I totally understand.